guys and welcome back. Today's video is going to be my 11 and 12 week pregnancy update. Okay, so let me start off by saying I'm sorry that I didn't post my 11 week update when I was 11 weeks, but I actually got really, really sick a week and a half ago and I was out for the count. So I apologize. So this week will be combined and then next week will be combined too so I can catch up, but then we'll be right back on schedule. But luckily my symptoms from a week 11 to week 12 were pretty similar so they're all gonna kind of flow together in one video. So at 12 weeks the baby is the size of a plum and it's measuring at 2.09 inches and it weighs 0.49 ounces. For weight gain, I have not gained any weight and I've actually lost six pounds to my pre-pregnancy weight. And that's mostly due to me being sick a week and a half ago. I had pretty much maintained my pre-pregnancy weight until I got sick. And then in a matter of, I think eight days, I lost about six pounds. Actually, I lost eight pounds and I gained two of them back. But let's start with symptoms. So my symptoms for the past couple of weeks are kind of skewed because I was sick in the middle of it, but I did still have my exhaustion. It had gotten better in the beginning of week 11. I had actually started to kind of pick back up my energy levels, but then I got sick and that kind of wiped me completely out and I was exhausted from the time I woke up until it was time to go to sleep again. But hopefully that's the only symptom that kind of lingers on. I can deal with that, but the nausea has seemed to kind of go by the wayside and my appetite is slowly but surely coming back. Um, speaking of appetite, my other symptom was I had an aversion to meat and to fried foods. I wanted nothing to do with any kind of red meat, especially I couldn't even think of like eating a steak or a burger or anything like that. And even chicken was kind of giving me a little gag reflex, but fried foods especially, the thought of it, just the thought of it gave me heartburn. And then my last thing, which I'm not sure if it's because I was sick, but it's still kind of happening to me now, so I'm gonna say it is a pregnancy symptom, is I have a really bad taste in my mouth almost all the time. So whenever I eat something, that's the only way to get the taste out of my mouth, but as soon as I stop eating, the taste comes back. It's like a really bad aftertaste all the time. And I know that some people get like a metallic-y taste in their mouth, and it's not metallic, it's just bad. Like I don't know how else to explain it, but I just kind of like, just have that taste in my mouth all the time and kind of gets rid of my appetite because I have the taste in my mouth and it makes me not want to eat anything. But eating is the only way to get the taste out of my mouth. So it's this weird upsetting cycle. But hopefully that will go away soon because that is really actually very annoying. Now let's go into cravings. This is my favorite part. Orange juice is still top of mind. I cannot get enough orange juice. I'm drinking it by the gallon. It's out of control. My friend actually bought me a gallon of orange juice for Valentine's Day. Like it's a known thing. I can't get enough. My husband just went to the store and bought me so much orange juice. It's the only thing that no matter what, I'm in the mood for any time of day. Um, in terms of drinks, I'm also craving chocolate milk. I've always liked chocolate milk. It's always been kind of an issue, but now it's like I have like a re legit reason. So my husband has to support the habit. So chocolate milk all day. He also works all the time and it's supposed to be really good for recovery. So it's a win-win. He gets to work out and recover. I get to sit back and relax. We're all just having a good time with our chocolate milk. So, so my next craving is pizza. All I want is pizza, pizza, pizza. And that's the only time I want any kind of cheesy things. And if anyone knows me, cheese is my shit. I love cheese, but the only time I want cheese these days is on a hot slice of pizza. It has to be crunchy, it has to be hot. If it's a soft crust, I don't want anything to do with it. Get it away from me. It has to be this particular kind of pizza. And where I work, there's actually a pizza shop in the building that makes really really good pizza and I get a discount so I find myself down there a little more often than I should be which my husband didn't know but now he does sorry <laughs> and lastly turkey and cheese sandwiches stop right there I know I know the risks with listeria and deli meats and all of that stuff I just have to live my life it's fine my mom said she lived her pregnancy on ham and cheese sandwiches from subway it's fine all I want is a good deli sandwich a couple times a week, and I don't feel bad about that. All is fine. Trust me, I wouldn't do anything to put me or baby in harm. Raised on ham and cheese. I'll say that. Swine. And in terms of events this week, 
we had our 12 week visit and I'll insert a picture of the little nugget now. He or she actually looks like a little baby with a big old head like it's daddy and I'm thinking it's a boy. If you look at this picture, look up the skull theory, tell me what you think in the comments below. Is it a boy or is it a girl? I 100% think it's a boy. My husband 100% thinks it's a girl. March 24th, we will find out for sure and I will report back to you, but I think I'm right. Mother's intuition. So during our 12 week visit, not only did we get a nice good shot of little baby, but we also had our nuchal translucency exam, which is basically where they measure the thickness of the space behind baby's neck to make sure that everything is measuring properly. Um, this is kind of the first test of a two part exam to test for chromosomal diseases such as Down syndrome and other chromosomal things. I can't think of anything else at the moment, but um, baby measured right on schedule and there was no problems with the distance between the, the baby's neck. So we were very, very happy to hear that. Um, part two of the test will be um, at the end of March and that's just gonna be um, blood. So we'll give blood and they'll test that and then they'll have within like a 96% accuracy rate if the baby is expected to have any kind of chromosomal defects. So um, anxious to see those results, but I feel pretty good. And this week we announced to all of our friends and coworkers and extended family that we are expecting our first child. Um, we actually still have to tell his family because we are waiting for the kids to come back for spring break because all of his siblings are in college right now. So he's one of seven, four of which are here in the city with us. So we're waiting for everyone to kind of be in one central location so we can kind of spill the beans that we're having a be. So um, that's pretty much it that happened this couple of weeks. Um, make sure that you subscribe if you have not already. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So let's go into, oh shit.